Hello, hello, hello. Look like I'm a little bit off today, but that's all right. Hello, hello, hello. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's get our little notes together here. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are talking about knowing your worth today. That is uh, faith for financial freedom. When you guys have the opportunity, go ahead and slide from left to right. Slide from left to right if you want iOS. If you're on iOS, go ahead and find slide from left to right. I look really close today. What is going on with this thing? This looks really close. Give me a second. See if I can back it up just a little bit. How y'all doing this? I hope y'all had a wonderful and blessed day today. Wonderful, blessed day. Matter of fact, uh, that's better. That's a little better. I, I was just like, right, really right here. I didn't want to be that close to the screen. But I hope everybody had a wonderful and blessed day today. Just text in how your day was, say blessed, or it could have been better, or anything. Text how were your how was your day today? Miss Crummy, I want to let you know. I think it's DeAndrea. I want to let you know I appreciate you. I always see that you went back and watched the post if you were not on uh earlier that morning. I always see that you actually shared on Twitter, uh, that you actually put the hearts on, all that kind of stuff. So uh thank you so much. I see we had people had great days, blessed days in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much. God's birth. Okay, as you come in, tell me how your day was. As you come into the room, tell me how awesome day. That's awesome. Tell me how your day was as you guys come into the room. Uh, you had an awesome day. I see people said he had awesome days, great days. How was your day today in the name of Jesus? We're going to get started. S day. What's that? I don't know that. Saved. <laughs> Saved day in the name of Jesus. Uh, a day. A day. All right. It was just a day. All right. Just a day. All right, so uh, as you guys know, this is Faithful Financial Freedom, where we're talking about one thing that is changing your mind so that you can and will change your money. I believe this one thing, and that is that money management is a mindset. Money management is a mindset. I believe poverty is a mindset. Poverty is a perpetual way of thinking that keeps you broke, a perpetual way, repeated way of thinking that keeps you broke. That's right. If I can change your mind about money, money will change its mind about you and stick around for a whole lot longer. I believe that 100%. Absolutely, 100%. You are not broke. Broke is a temporary condition, but poverty is a mindset. A poor person will always be broke. Always. Poor person will always be broke. But broke is a, is a temporary condition once you change your mindset. So we're changing your mind, helping renewing your mind about money and finances. In the mornings, every day at 7.30 a.m. No, 7 o'clock a.m. Every day at 7 o'clock a.m., we're right here teaching you biblical principles. I'm going to say it again, teaching you biblical principles about how and why you are supposed to be. Your day was awesome. You are so welcome. You blessed me so much. Thank you so much, DeAndrea. Uh, why you were supposed to be paid in full, paid in full. If you guys are not listening to the Abraham study that we're doing right now, it is going to bless your life. Our morning meditation on this morning was off the chain. It really was. It blessed me. Made, man, it, I was went to out and started my day today with just on fire. I was on fire. I'm telling you this morning. So uh, if you guys did not be able, did not have the opportunity to go and watch that, go back and watch it. It was absolutely excellent. And then in the afternoons we take, we do biblical principles in the morning. We do life application in the evenings. What scripture is that? Faith. I bought a, I bought a friend today. What kind of friend? You bought a puppy? What you buy, Raven? Um, we do biblical principles in the morning, life application in the evening. What is that? It's faith without works is dead. Faith in the morning. We build our faith and we teach you how to actually put these things to work. God says he's going to bless the works of your hand. He said, whatever you do shall prosper. If you ain't putting these to work and you ain't doing nothing, there's nothing for him to bless or nothing to prosper. So we're teaching you how to get and build your real estate, open your business, get out of debt. Um, all those things pretty on Periscope. <laughs> so brought, not bought. What I say? Oh, she brought a friend. Oh, you brought a friend today. Oh, well, blessed be the name of the Lord. Who's your friend? Welcome, welcome. Slide from left to right. Thank you, DeAndre. Slide from left to right if you're on iOS, up and down if you're on Android. Share, share. We're going to be talking about know your worth. Uh, you said bought. Yeah, I thought it was brought. So uh, know your worth. Know your worth. We talked about net worth on yesterday. If you emailed me, I sent you this sheet right here. Uh, I sent you this little sheet right here. Uh, this is our logo right there. That's Faithful Financial Freedom logo. Uh, you should have this. This is a network earning statement. You should have received these in your email if you emailed me in the name of Jesus. That email for question and answers. We will do live question and answers every single evening right here. That is at George at GMHoward.com. My name is George Mitchell. My dad was a country boy. From Tyler C, Alabama, that's where they had them red dirts and them red ants. And I went out and played with both of them. <laughs> I 
Tallahassee, Alabama. That's George Mitchell. So I'm just gmhoward.com, George at gmhoward.com. We're believing God that gmhoward.com is going to be up by the end of the month in the name of Jesus. We've got four days to get it up. Everything won't be on there, but we will have some articles and things for you to share. And we'll start building those things up as we go. So we're excited about all the wonderful things that are going on right here uh, with us. All right. Uh, net worth. We, yesterday we talked about, we were going to talk about, uh, well, yesterday we talked about know your worth. We we kind of shared that your worth and your uh, your net worth and your, and your self-worth are sometimes connected. Typically, they are very connected. Uh, as you've seen your net worth go up, I guarantee you, you'll begin to see uh, the things that we do externally go down. That is a proven statistic. That is a proven statistic that as your net worth goes up, the flamboyance of what we wear as far as name brands and stereotypes actually begin to go down. So what does that say in reverse? If you see people actually doing the stereotypical stuff, your coaches, your Gucci, your Louis Vuitton, your Prada, um, you know, all those kind of things, Giorgio Armani, all those kind of things, you begin to see people down here, or I guess say down here wearing, um, that kind of tells you that they kind of broke. It, it does. As you begin to get up here, the things that people wear that's flashy actually begins to go down. Uh, and you'll begin to see that. So, um, that's, but that's part of the mindset and culture. And we're going to be talking about that every day. We're going to share a nugget that's going to begin to change that mindset. You got to change this in order to change this. All right. So net worth right here. If you guys fill this out, how many people actually filled out your net worth form? Uh, just say me, say, say me, you played around with it, toy with it. Uh, and today we're going to talk about how, where should you be? According to um, your age bracket, as far as your net worth is concerned, you're like, okay, I know what net worth is. Okay, uh, Mr. Robinson, welcome to. I want to welcome you to uh, to Faith for Financial Freedom, Mr. Robinson. Uh, look like he's the only one. Miss Drea did it as well. Uh, I hope you guys wasn't depressed when it was all over, said and done. I hope you guys still had a smile on your face. I'm like, yes. And if you wasn't, we're gonna teach you how to get there. You're gonna go to bed thinking like this. Like you're gonna go to bed like this, just thinking about your net worth. This. <laughs> just a smile on your face because you sleep better when everything paid off the car drive better when it's paid off the house lives better when it's paid off i'm telling you you got to get there in the name of jesus all right so if you guys got this thing we're going to actually talk about this and we're going to start off with a little with a little thing i want you to put something in i want you to text something in um the phone i want you to text something in the phone Everybody I want to participate in this. Everybody must participate in this. And that is, watch this. I want you, I want to find, well, what is the least amount of money that you would consider a lot? Now, I know that's like, what? What kind of question is that? I want you to think about it. What's the minimum amount of money that you say, oh, that's a lot? For example, $99 is not a lot, but $100, that's a lot. What's the least amount? Now, if you guys put $100 in there, uh, we're going to have to uh, do some other things. So what is the minimum amount of money that you would consider? Who's the first bravest one? The first brave person who's going to put it in. The least amount of money that you would consider a lot. $1,000. That's the least amount of money that you would consider a lot. All right. What's a lot? $1.5 million. Okay. $1.5. 25 demand. Come on, man. <laughs> demand. $500, the least amount of money that you would consider a lot. All right, $500, okay. I only seen about four answers come across the screen. I need to see uh, Petty. <laughs> okay, Mr. Robinson said $100,000. $100,000, the least amount of money that you would consider a lot. All right, $100,000. Anybody else? Did anybody else? She said $20,000. $20,000 is the least amount of money that you would consider a lot. All right. Uh, that might be about the amount of people that's in the room. Okay, listen. I seen somebody said 1.8 million, 1.5 million. Who was that? Who was the 1.5 million? Who who was that? Just say me. I don't care. Say who was it? The 1.5 million person. 1.5 million person. Who was that? Just say me. I don't know who it was. I don't remember anyway. Well, the one point. It was Joy. All right, Joy. Girl, you won the magic prize today. Listen. Uh, in order to shift our mindsets from Canada, amen, in the name of Jesus, in order to myth, in order to shift our mindsets, we got to start thinking about raising our ceiling. Now, where you are today, if you say 50, 25, 
uh, 500, 1,000, 20,000. Uh, when you tell me I have to pay $25, I will have to think about it. <laughs> okay. But what I'm saying is when you begin to say these numbers, I need you to begin to shift your mindset. What am I saying? I'm saying that I need you to get used to using numbers with three zeros behind them. I need you to get used to it. You can only go where your mind will take you. You can only go where your mind will take you. And when we start using these numbers today about building your net worth and how much money you should be yet to build your net worth, when you start putting these numbers behind your name, it has to shift your mindset. It will not be believable to you. Has to be believable to you. Has to. So when I say that you need a net worth of $2 million, you're like, $2 million? Oh, that's a lot. It's not a lot. Every day, that's $14 trillion that goes through U.S. banking system. $14 trillion. Demond, how many zeros is that? It's nine of them. $14 trillion every single day goes through the banking system. How much money do you get out of that? A million dollars is not a lot of money. It's not. It's not a lot of money. I've got to shift your mindset. You've got to get to that place where you say a million dollars is not a lot. My floor is 1.5 million. That's my floor. Miss Joy from Canada hit it right on the head. That's my floor. One, a million and a half. What? Yeah, yeah it's, and it's not because of taxes. No, I'm telling you. You want that problem. Like, man, I got to dodge the tax man this season. You know, this is how you know if you've arrived or not. This is how you know if you've arrived or not. If you can't wait the tax season, you ain't there yet. If you're the person like, man, I need to file an extension. <laughs> I'm telling you, you got to shift your mindset. You got to shift it. You got to begin to think like you're wealthy, act like you're wealthy, and do like you're wealthy. And wealthy people don't spend money on consumer goods. Only broke people do. And they keep putting infiltration of media into the system to keep you spending money, to keep you spending, to keep the economy going. Oh, the economy's not doing well. Why? Because you're not spending. Amen. I'm telling you. We got to get this thing together. So now let's try it again. What is the minimum amount of money that you would consider a lot? I need you to do it. I need you to put it in the phone. What is the minimum amount of money? You got to, I'm telling you, raise your ceiling. The minimum amount of money that you consider a lot. Don't forget, the Bible says this, that the earth is the Lord is in the fullness thereof. He owns everything and you his son. If you know how to give good gifts to your kids, how much more will God do for you? Listen, two, I see 2 million, 20 million. 500 million. Okay, 5 million. Okay. I'm telling you, you got to put them numbers in the phone. I want you to actually text it. I want to see it. 10 million, 25 million, a billion. Thank you, Drea. There is no cap. A hundred million dollars. That's, I need you to get used to it. I need you to get used to putting those numbers on paper. Shift that mindset right now. You got to begin to see, I'm telling you, when you do this network worksheet and you begin to say, I believe in God to take me to a place of more than enough. You got to chip. You got. Listen, you will never get it if you can't think you own it. You should have it. You will never get it if you don't think you should have it. Never, never. But when you start saying every day, a million dollars is my floor. A million dollars is where I start. I know you might look at where you are right now, but that's not where you're going to end up. Matter of fact, you need to tell somebody right now. Matter of fact, take a selfie on your phone right now. Just, just go ahead and pose like this. Just pose. <laughs> take a selfie on your phone right now. Why? You need to remember, this is where I started. This is the starting point. This is the starting point. If you want to know, you want to remember me as I am, you got to take a picture because I won't be here very long. I'm going to be someplace else. I'm going to be someplace different. Not physically, but emotionally, financially, healthy, spiritually. God has taken me someplace else. He's moving you someplace else. In the name of you. Go on ahead, take a selfie. Boom. You can't do it while you're on Periscope. When you get off of this thing, matter of fact, send me your selfies. I want you to take, boom. You need to remember me now because I'm not going to be here always. I'm telling you, I'm not going to be here always. Okay. So, you don't have a ceiling. You don't have a ceiling. In the name of Jesus. That's right. You receive it. All right. So, we, yesterday we talked about, now, I can't let you guys get scared of these numbers. That's why we just did the, uh, the exercise that we just did. You cannot get scared of these numbers. These numbers, if you ain't ready for them, you ain't ready to move in faith, these numbers will scare you. But God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. You got to look at this thing with reasonable thought and say, hey, how much money did Solomon have? 
How much money did Abraham have? Isaac, Jacob, David, Jesus. I mean, when you start going through these things and all of our patriarchs who was filthy rich, Joseph. How much money did Joseph have? Oh, my God. Like, think about it and say, hey, listen, I'm just, Bible says that he's not a respect of persons. If God, listen, if God said he's not a respect of persons and your patriarchs were rich and wealthy and the Bible uses those words and it wasn't talking about rich in the spirit. It was talking about rich in their pockets. So you take them super spiritual people. So oh, he was rich in the spirit. He was. He was rich in the spirit. And because he was faithful and because he was rich in the spirit, he was also rich in his pocket in the name of Jesus. <laughs> You got to begin to renew that mindset. Your culture, your mindset, your religion, your community, everything around you has reshaped and reprogrammed your mind to think that this is how you're supposed to live. It's not. And so we're spending every day shifting your mindset. Every day we're going to tell the devil that you are defeated. Every day we're coming back and letting you know that you are more than what everybody else told you you are. You are who God says you are. You can be what God says you can be and you can have what God says you can have. Shift got to make the shift. Matter of fact, if you believe in God to make the shift, just text shift right now. Shift, shift, shift in the name of Jesus. Text it, shift. I'm shifting right now. I'm shifting. My, I'm shifting my train of thought. I'm shifting my finances. I'm shifting emotionally. My peace is shifting. My happiness is shifting. My joy is shifting. My friendships is shifting. My anointing is shifting. My time with God is shifting. My relationships, they're shifting in the name of Jesus. You're shifting right now in the name of Jesus. All right, so that's right. Shift, 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 shift in the name of Jesus. All right, so how much should you wait? Where should you be? I hope you got your pen and paper out. Let's hit these numbers. Let's hit them. Let's hit these numbers. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Let's go. All right, if you are AO, let me tell you what these numbers are. If you was watching yesterday, you know what they are. But let me give some of our new viewers uh, what they are. These are your network numbers of where you should be according to your age. Now, before I put these numbers out here, I have to let you know that everybody's numbers may be different because of your income. You cannot expect for somebody over the last 10 years who made $30,000 to have the same net worth over the last 10 years of somebody who made $80,000. Just kind of don't add up. So these are your minimums. We're going to give you a minimum. We're going to give you where you probably might want to be at. Your minimum and where you kind of want to be at. All right. Now, 18 to 25. We're starting at 18 because that's when you usually start working. 25, you're coming with 21. You're coming out of college. You got student loan debt. You got credit card debt. These are these things. This is reality. This is normal. This is usually when you're still in uh, inundated by the uh, the world system, inundated by the world system. Man, when we start talking about the two different systems, there's a kingdom system and a world system. It's going to bless your mind. I'm telling you, it's going to bless your mind in the name of Jesus. But they're still inundated by this. They're still young, think you know everything. I remember I was there. <laughs> uh, except I think I did know everything. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Y'all got to laugh. You got to laugh. All right. 18 to 25. Your net worth should be somewhere between 10 to 30 thousand dollars. All right. All right. Uh, 10 to $30,000. I'm glad somebody laughed at that. Y'all be like, he's so arrogant. No, I just like to be silly. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. 18 to 25, 10 to $30,000 is where you should be. Write it down. Come on, let's write this down. In the name of Jesus, write it down. 10 to $30,000 is where you should be. 18 to 25. This is your net worth. If you don't remember what your net worth is, it's all of your assets minus all of your liabilities. All of your assets minus all your liabilities. Email me at georgiagmhoward.com. To get your faith for financial freedom or financial freedom universities worksheets. I want you to get them. I want you to have them. I want you to play with it and um, and get those in your hands. Okay. Um, that's George at GMHoward.com. Email me um, right there. 26 to 30. 26 to 30. Y'all ready? 30 to $60,000. I'm going to give you a secret in a minute. We're going to be like, man, how in the world am I supposed to get there? Don't forget. These are not a lot. This is not a lot. You have to say it. This is not a lot. All of your assets minus all of your income. I'm sorry. All of your assets minus all of your liabilities. And we talked about the different types of assets on yesterday and the different types of liabilities on yesterday. If you did not have the opportunity to watch that, I'll be up. You'll be uh, we'll be archiving that at George. No, at GM Howard Ministries, GM Howard Junior Ministries on YouTube. GM Howard Junior Ministries on YouTube because I believe Periscope has already deleted them. All right, thirty-five to forty. 
Did I forget? I forgot a, a age group in here in the name of Jesus. I see. I didn't do 30 to 35. All right. But 35. So let's go ahead and change it now. We're going to edit this as we go. All right. Y'all ready? So we're going to say 30 to 35. I got to change my dates, my ages. It's 60 to 120,000. If you 30 to 35,000 years old, you should have about $60,000. Denise, how you doing? Good to see you, girl. Well, I guess I don't see you. Uh, thank you, Lady Drew. Thank you so much. That's our secretary, y'all. Give it up for our secretary. She going to the Holy Land. And we're going to be following her on Periscope in the name of Jesus. If you have not befriended Drea, go ahead and hit her name. And the next time she will hit the little number in the corner, hit her and follow her because she's going to the Holy Land. And uh, I want all of us to be able to experience that vicariously through her experience. I want to see all of it. I definitely want to see you go down in the water. I definitely want to see you go down in the water. All right. All right. So then we got uh, 35 through 40 is 120 to 240,000 dollars. You say by the time. Wow. What a great experience. Yes. I can't wait to go myself. Um, 35 to 40 years of age. 120 to 240 thousand dollars. That's where you want to be at. Now y'all like at 40 years old, I suppose I had that much money. That's not a lot. Y'all gotta say it. 200, a half a million to a quarter million dollars is not a lot of money. It's not a lot of money. If you think that's a lot, that's the maximum you're gonna ever get. If you think that's a lot, that's the maximum you're gonna ever get. It's not a lot of money. It's not a lot of money. All right. All right. Let's see here. If you are 40 to 45 years of age, you should have 240 to half a million dollars. What was the 30 to 30? 30 to 35 was 60 to 120. 60 to 100. Yes, right. Now it is 31. You're correct. Uh, but that would be um, 60 to 120,000. And the next tier will be 120 to 240. I'm not sure if you guys are noticing the pattern, but these are doubling every five years. They're doubling every five years. If you haven't noticed, it, that's what's happening. They're doubling every five years. You're like, how am I going to do that? Number one, you're going to do it by being a good steward to God and watch God multiply it. God says everything you do is supposed to be multiple. I can't wait till we get to the Matthew chapter 25 for our Bible study. We're looking at probably like another month before we get there. But man, it's going to blow your mind. When you guys start, when we begin to talk about how you're supposed to be a multiplier, every, I want you guys to read Genesis chapter one. All right. Just read Genesis chapter one. Everything that God did in Genesis chapter one, once he made it, God looked at it and said it was good. Then after he said it was good, which means that it's made right. The next thing that he did. Yes, as a man thinks so in his heart, so is he. You can never go faster than where you think. That's correct. Uh, Genesis chapter one, everything after he blesses it, everything he looks at, he said, be fruitful and multiply every single thing in the garden. Now, one thing did he not say, be fruitful and multiply. You're supposed to be a multiplier. Everything God makes multiplies. Everything. So when you start looking at these numbers, that's right. As a man thinketh in his heart, 20, Proverbs 23 and 7. Thank you, Lady Drea. Um, okay, so let's go ahead. Uh, did I say it? I said the 240 to 500,000 uh, from age 45, or we say 46 through 50, through 50. We're looking at 500,000 to a million. Lady Drew. Okay, Lady Drew. I got a new name for her. Um, that's 500 to a million dollars. Now, I got to reiterate this. It's not a lot of money. Y'all got to say it. Every time the devil comes into your heart and you be scared to write these numbers down, you got to put your hand in your head and say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke that spirit of fear. It's not a lot of money. That's not a lot of money. When you begin to say, <laughs> when you begin to look at these numbers, you write them down saying, well, this is what my network should be. You're like, oh my God. Take that spirit and cast it down in the name of Jesus. Okay, you got to cast that thing. Throw it, throw it down in the name. Just take it and say, ah, in the name of Jesus, I'm not having it. And then you throw that thing down. 45 to 50 would be, you said 45 to 50, would be half a million to half a million to one million. So 500,000 to one million dollars. 500,000 to one million dollars is where you should be at. All right. If you're doing 51 through 55. <laughs> We should be at one million to two million dollars. One million to two million dollars. All right. You're like, how am I gonna get there? We gonna get there. Number one, we gonna believe God to multiply. But number two, we gonna put some practical principles in place that's gonna teach you. We are gonna talk about some of them today, but we are gonna spend the rest of the week teaching you about each one of these different elements and how to begin to grow this net worth thing. I'm telling you, man, all this you're getting on Periscope every day for. 
free. Somebody say free. Thank you, Jesus, for free. <laughs> for free? Yes, for free. All right. All right. We just believe it. See, this is what I teach and I tell everybody. I believe that this is my ministry and God is using you to help, number one, cultivate my ministry, to sharpen my skills. Um, God is telling you, this is my test. You guys are my test. God says this, that if you're faithful over a few, that you can be trusted with a lot. You guys on Periscope are my few. And we watch how God grows this thing over time. Watch him. He says, little by little, will you come into increase? This is all scripture, little by little. He says, do not despise the days of small beginnings. Thank you. Thank you for being here and being faithful. He says, do not despise the days of small beginnings. So right now, you guys are homing in and say, man, I remember when that dude was doing it in his kitchen on Periscope. You're going to look up. I'm going to be on TBN. I'm going to be on uh, the Word Network. I'm going to be on ABC and CNN and Fox. They, we're going to be on all of them. They're going to be like, man, I remember when. Yes, because I've been faithful to God. This is my seed. This is my seed to you. And watch how God begins to make this seed multiply and watch a harvest. I can't teach this stuff if I don't believe it. I can't. Google this stuff. Watch and see how much Dave Ramsey makes a year. And I'm telling you, you don't get this with Dave Ramsey. Watch and see how much Susie Orman makes a year. You don't get this with Susie Orman. Watch how much John Commuter makes a year. It's already grown in my marriage. Praise God. Blessed be God. I'm so happy for you. I believe, is it Bug? Bug is your, marriage? Bug is your husband? God, blessed be the name of God. And just watch and see how you guys, the Bible says, how can two walk together except they agree? Now that you guys are watching this together and you guys are coming into harmony in your matrimony and your marriage and you come into agreement with that, Watch how God begins to watch you begin to dictate your finances and you begin to go into increase, increase together. I'm telling you, watch, just watch. Y'all, boy, y'all doing the best thing for your marriage you could ever do. You're going to grow spiritually together and you're going to go financially together. And you guys going to go into that land of more than enough. Happy like this in your sleep. <laughs> All right. Uh, if y'all didn't get, you came in late. Y'all missed that joke. All right. So we got ages 56 to 60. Ages 56 to 60, um, you're looking at two million to four million dollars. Favor in your house in the name of Jesus. Two million to four million dollars. Y'all don't let these numbers scare you, especially if you close to these numbers. If you like, I'm 50 years old, and I suppose at 50 years old, I suppose I have you know a million dollars. Don't let it scare you. And if you're saying, Man, I'm here, and I suppose to be here. Don't let it scare you. Don't you know the Bible says that he will restore the days of your youth, that he will bring you in on eagle's wings? What is eagle's wings? He'll bring you in swiftly, quickly. He can do, God can do in a year what it takes somebody to do in 10,000 years. Don't, it takes one idea to change your life. One idea. One idea will change your life. Ask Colonel, one piece of chicken changed, changed Colonel Sanders' life. One piece of chicken. 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 One piece of chicken changed his life. One sermon changed T.D. Jake's life. He preached one sermon on TBN. Actually, it was not. I'll take that back. He preached one sermon where um, Paul and Jan actually got one of his DVDs, put him on TBN, and it set him, man, blew up. And that's when he actually, then he started doing Woman Thou Loose. And after Woman Thou Loose, man, T.D. Jake's the household name. One sermon changed his life. One idea. You got to say, God, I believe you. I believe you. I trust you. These numbers are not a lie. These numbers are not a lot. I'm gonna keep. I, I'm gonna keep. And uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Repeating it over and over and over and over again. Iterating, reiterating that. I'm gonna keep reiterating that over and over and over again. Why? Because I know how the devil makes you think. I know that he'll begin to put these seeds in your heart to say, "Man, that's a lot of money." No, it's not. Look at the. You look at your God. Who is your God? Is anything too hard for God? You know that's coming up in the Abraham study. It's coming up. Is there anything? Too hard for God? Anything. If he can keep the world on his axis, you don't mean to tell me he can give you a million dollars? Anything. Just, just think about it. All right. Six, 56 to 60. Two million to four million dollars. And then when we say 60 to 65, we're saying it is four million to eight million dollars. And when you're 70 plus, you should be at 10 million. Cool. 10 million, cool. Like $10 million. Oh my God. Yes. In the name of Jesus. What else are you supposed to have in the kingdom of God? That way, when y'all get ready to build the next church, you can say, I'm writing a check for it in Jesus' name. We the whole building paid for it right now in Jesus' name. Building paid for it. 
Yeah. He said, I want, I want to open up some homeless shelters in Jesus' name. It's, it's, it's 13 below zero right now. I'm believing God. We're going to put... You know, we're gonna put up twenty bed. We're gonna put up twenty bedrooms. We're gonna put eight people in each room. So we're gonna put hundred and sixty people in warm places tonight. And then you gotta feed them the next morning. And we don't want the government money to do it. We are gonna show them how the kingdom of God does it. This is how the kingdom does it. You never see in the Bible where it says take the poor to 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 the government. You never see where it says take the sick to the government. You never see where it says take all of this is supposed to be done by the church, the widows. They say, when they say, look after the widows and orphans, the church is supposed to be doing this. But you can't do it because you broke. Not anymore. Broke is a temporary condition. We're changing that poverty mindset in the name of Jesus. Let's say $10 million is not. We are kingdom billionaires in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lay your hand on your head and say in the name of Jesus, $10 million is not a lot. $10 million is not a lot. All right. So I'm going to repeat this real quickly because I hope you got it. Just go over your notes real quick, real fast. 18 to 25 is 10 to $30,000. That's your starting point. I know many of you, if you're in that category, you may even start off negative. You may even start off negative, but that's okay. We're not going to stay there. All right. 26 to 30, you're looking at 30 to $60,000. 30 to 35, you're looking at 660 to 120. 35 to 40, 120 to 240, 40 to 45, 240 to 500, 45 to 50, 500,000 to a million. You're looking at, uh, what am I at? 51 to 55, 1 million to 2 million, 56 to 60, 2 million to 4 million, 60 to 65, 4 million to 8 million, and 70, at 70 years old, you're looking at 10 million plus. Now, I'm going to tell you now, 10 million plus is not a lot of money. I'm believing God that AssureTech, my company, my company, we believe in God for $10 million worth of contracts this year. It's not a lot of money. That's this year. That's this year. Next year, we're going to be a whole, it's going to be almost probably $100 million, honestly. That's this year. One idea. That's all you need. One idea. That's all you need. It's not a lot of money. It's not. You got to get it in your head. It's not. If you start a business, well, okay. How do we get there? I'm not going to preach today. We're going to. Go do our morning meditation on tomorrow morning. Let's do this practical application stuff. Let's get this stuff to you. All right. How touch and agree with you in the name of Jesus. Thank you. All right. So, um, how do we get there? I'm glad you asked the question. I've been praying over it. We've been fasting over it. I, ain't, I didn't fast. That was a lie. I ain't gonna get on this thing and start lying. But I did pray over it several times. I pray every night for you. Everybody, y'all don't know it. I call y'all by name because I pray for y'all every single night. I'm praying. Y'all are the starting testimonies. Starting testimony. There's a guy by the name of um, God Andrew. I don't remember. Um, man, I just ordered like five of his books. But anyway, uh, he's a pastor, and uh, he pastors. He said he's made over a hundred millionaires in his church. Huh? He said he's made over a hundred million dollars in his church. Now this is the, a Caucasian man. Uh, he actually came to. Uh, Apostle Amos Howard's church and uh, some of the things I cannot think of the name of his books. I had to just I just ordered some like three days ago. All my I lost my whole library. So I'm rebuilding every every two weeks. I'm going to be ordering new books every two weeks. And it's only like thirty dollars worth of books. But on Amazon, I can get ten books for thirty dollars <laughs> on Amazon. I get ten used books for thirty dollars. And when they come, they look brand new because people don't want this stuff. I'm getting all this stuff, getting all this stuff. I'm just rebuilding my library. But anyway. And one of the things that he preaches, he says, rich people need to be saved too. <laughs> and you know, when he said it, it like a light went off. Like he said, man, listen, rich people need to be saved too. He said, we always preach to the poor, but we need to preach to the rich. About that. He said, then you teach the poor people how to be rich. And what does it do for the kingdom? What does it do for your ministry? It's like, man, man, I mean, tell you, it, man, he turned the light on for me. Turned the light on for me. Awesome man of God. I'm going to, um, I'll probably tell y'all his name tomorrow. I cannot remember his name right now. I cannot. I can't even remember the name of the books, but uh, awesome man of God. All right. Six tips for increasing your net worth. Y'all ready? Six tips for increasing your net worth. How are we going to get to this 10 million plus? Very quickly in Jesus' name. Very quickly in Jesus' name. Number one, simply this. You got to pay off your debt. You got to take your money back from the bank. You got to pay off your debt, man. You got you to gotta take you got to take this money back. Every single time you make a payment on debt and it's a minimum payment, you're actually giving away interest payments. You're giving away money. You cannot 
anything well you cannot have what some people call good debt and I say that very carefully and until we actually do and this is like financial management like 304 you know what I'm saying it's one of the upper upper classes you got to be uh, uh, you know a graduate student to take these classes when we start talking about leverage leverage and that's you know using other people's money that's the only way but you can't use other people's money when you got a whole lot of debt in yourself that's bad debt bad debt and good debt don't work together the Bible says this how can uh, light and darkness have no communion with each other they have no common they're not common can't have both of them let's get rid of this bad debt that's number one so when we start talking about going after this debt I need you to have the mindset that is stealing from you that, that they're stealing from you, that they're stealing from you. I need you to have that mindset that debt is pulling away from your future. Debt is pulling away from everything that you're trying to obtain in the name of Jesus. That anything that costs money without making without making more money got to be paid off. Anything that costs you money without making you more money got to go in the name of Jesus right now. I don't care what it is. In the name of Jesus, we're going after it with guerrilla intensity. What does that mean? That means we got to have some self-denial. I said it. Self-denial, self-discipline. We got to say no to ourselves. You can never master anything else when you have not mastered yourself. Oh my God. I'm, I'm saying that because I'm hitting me. See, y'all don't understand. I be preaching to myself too or teaching to myself. You can never master something else when you haven't mastered yourself because the person who goes to get the something else is the self. But if you haven't mastered the self, you will never get the something else. That's what fasting is. Fasting, watch this. The Bible says some things only come by fasting and praying. Fasting tames the body. It trains the body. Praying trains the spirit. And you're working in both elements. Fasting and praying. Fasting is about the body. I can tell myself no. I got enough self-discipline. I can do these. Praying is when you operate in the spirit. You got to have both of them. Do you have enough self-discipline? Do you have it to say no to the sale, to say no to the clearance rack, to say no to that new vehicle? And it's sharp, fellas. It's bad. Do you have enough self-discipline to say no to that new suit, no to that new, new shoes, no to that new purse and no new glasses? Do you got enough self-discipline to stop going out to eat that much? Which one do you want more? You want to live like everybody else right now or you want to live like nobody else tomorrow? Nobody else. Because listen, only 3% of people are getting here. Only 3% of people. So people going to think you're weird because you are. You are weird. You're not normal. Normal people are broke. Normal people are living check to check. Normal people won't be able to retire and still have some money. That's normal. You're not normal. So people are supposed to think you're weird. It's okay. Jesus said this. He says, you're not from this world. <laughs> Find it not strange. He said, find it out straight. He said, you're not in this world. Matter of fact, he said, you're an, ambas you're an ambassador of Christ. An ambassador is somebody who's from another country. You, you're not from this world. You, you're from another kingdom. You got, when you got saved, God put you in another kingdom. And you say, I don't operate on the faith realm. I mean, on the earth realm anymore. I operate on the faith realm. See, y'all operating the physical. I'm operating in faith. Two different realms. You're an ambassador. You're weird. You're, you're, you're a kingdom kid. You think the whole way you think is different. He said, oh, no man, nothing but love. You're the lender, not the borrower. That's what God said about you. That's who you are. So you got to get this debt off of you. The Bible says debt is a spirit. There's only one spirit in the Bible, and that's the Holy Spirit. And so if it's not the Holy Spirit, it's an evil spirit. If debt is a spirit, that means it's evil in the name of Jesus. And we rebuke it and send it back to the pits of hell from which it come. We paying that thing off. We believe in God for a remarkable and miraculous uh, debt deliverance in the name of Jesus. Debt elimination in the name of Jesus is coming. In the name, in the name of Jesus. Oh, no, oh, no, man, nothing but love. I believe is Romans chapter 13, Drea. Romans chapter 13, I believe. Uh, Y'all can look that up for me. All right. Number two. If you're still working, max out your retirement contributions. Say it again. If you have a company that matches, that's an automatic 50% return. If you have a company that matches, that's automatically 50%. 50% return is huge. Huge. The market is only generating 7 to 10%. Your, your, your company is matching usually up to 3 or 5%, somewhere in there. 
Put that three to five percent, that's a 50% return. So if I put in five percent, they put in five percent, that's ten percent. Telling y'all, that's automatic. Max that thing out every single check. Why? Because you start waking that money work for you. Your money should be making money. And when that money makes money, them babies should start having should start making money. And then when that make a little bit of money, them babies should start making money. That's called compound interest. The banks make it work for them every single day, compound interest. You know how you know? You pay it when you pay that credit card debt. Compound interest. You pay it when you pay that car note. Compound interest. You pay it when you pay that mortgage. Compound interest. No, in the name of Jesus. It works for you, not against you. You are the lender and not the borrower in Jesus' name. All right. Max out your retirement contributions. Number three. Oh, Jesus. This should have been number one. Matter of fact, we're going to actually make this number one. This is number one. You got to cut your expenses. Now, I know y'all like, huh? Yeah. Cut your expenses. Don't be scared of it. It's okay. How bad do you want it? You want that steak? More than you want to be in the land of more than enough? How bad do you want this thing? How bad do you want it? Tell me, how, how bad do you want it? Cut your expenses. What do you mean? Number one, the only way you're going to cut your expenses is you got to change your mindset. You got to renew the mind. You got to renew your mind. You got to begin to say that I want something more than I want this. Something has to replace the desire for more stuff. Something has to. What is it? A vision of where I'm going. A vision of where I want to be. I can see it in the name of Jesus. What do you want to be? What do you want? What's your, what's your banking account look like? What's your savings account look like? What's your retirement accounts look like? In the name of Jesus. What is your net worth look like? In the name of Jesus. I want that more than I want this 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 red lobster, this Morton Steakhouse, this Applebee's, out more than Amazon. If it ain't making you money, you don't want it. You got to get that mindset. If it's not making money, it don't make sense. Who said that? Who, who, who? who said that? I know we got Demon, we got Brittany, we got Josette. I'm not Denise on the phone. Y'all come from that generation. I think if it don't make money, it don't make sense. I think it was P. Diddy, but I'm not sure. Uh, I think no, P. Diddy did say more money, more problems. Who was it? If it don't make money, it don't make sense. Go ahead and put it on there. I don't know who it was. All right. First thing I do is, is change your mindset. Now, when you change your mindset, when you change your mindset, and I'm telling you only when you change your mindset, you got to do these, what well, is next thing? Diddy, it was Diddy. Okay. Um, when you change your mindset, you got to do this. I want you to do this. I need you to consolidate. 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 Now, again, somebody asked me this question before, and I always tell this, even when I was on the air, consolidation can be a very dangerous thing if you have not changed your mindset. If it's not making money, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> George Howard Jr. All right, in the name of Jesus. Uh, we're going to redefine it in Jesus' name. That's right. If it don't make money, it don't make sense. Listen, consolidate the student loan debt and their credit card debt. Bring it into one payment. Make that payment smaller. Why? Because when you consolidate that into one loan, under one interest payment, that's going to eliminate all the other payments. That's freed up money. That's, that's money that we're going to use to fight the enemy with. That's ammunition. So, for example, you have $1,000 in credit card debt you pay every month. $1,000 in credit card debt you pay every month. We just say, not credit card, in, in, in debt that we pay off every month. We consolidate all that down into um, $300 worth of payments. It went from $1,000 to three dollars to $300, and it can be done. That's realistic, very realistic. All right? That's $700 now that I'm used to spending every single month paying these payments that now I can use to get debt free. I can use it to get debt free. I can use that to uh, begin to, once we get debt free, now we take all that money that we was using and we're paying off all that debt with, now we start using that money to start building our wealth. All right, but that's not the only ways to do it. We got some other ways, okay? All right, cut your expenses. What else am I saying? Well, what you can do is you can transfer some balances on some credit cards. If you can't consolidate, transfer some balances on some credit cards. Call them up and negotiate for lower interest rates, especially if you got good credit. You got good credit, call them up and say, hey, Mr. Creditor, I got good credit. And guess what? They already know it because they pull your credit like every three months. Don't worry, it doesn't go against your credit. It's called a soft inquiry. You don't even know they're doing it. But like every three months, that's how they know if they want to reduce your balance or not. Yes, that's how they know. That's how if you if you ever got like you had a ten thousand dollar line of credit, a credit card, and you got a line in the mail, 
uh, or uh, a letter of mail said we're reducing your balance to five thousand. That's probably because they seen you as a higher risk. All right. Um, uh, begin to cut off, save on your energy bills. And these are simple, simple stuff like program your thermostat. If you have a, a program or thermostat, just change out your light bulbs. Um, unplug all your electrical appliances when you're not using them. Yeah, like little simple stuff. You know, I got a, I got an auntie name, Auntie May. Uh, if you guys, you know, Auntie May, and uh, I'm going to tell you all my testimony one day. One day we're just going to do the afternoon session, and uh, I'm going to tell you my testimony. And uh, as a matter of fact, I already see how I'm going to do it. When I get the, the next, the last house that I just bought, uh, over the next 30 to 45 days, we're going to rehab it. And I'm going to sit in that house, and I'm going to tell you all my testimony how uh, what God has brought me from over the last three years. It's going to mess you up. It's going to mess you up. I'm going to be sitting in something that God has blessed me with. It's going to mess. When I tell y'all my testimony, man, it's going to mess you. Y'all going to be like, oh my God, there is a God. It's going to mess you up. I'll tell you my testimony. All right. God, anyway, my auntie, and she's making me so mad. She always unplugged the coffee pot. I don't even drink coffee. I just used to go in there and watch her plug it up every morning. I'm like, why does she keep the microwave? Edge? And then if 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 you unplug the microwave, I'm sorry, if you uh use the microwave plugged in and, and you left the kitchen and didn't unplug it, like uh, you know, they call me Georgie in my family. Y'all don't call me that name, but they call me jo Georgie? How come you didn't plug this microwave? We're like, oh my god, are you serious? It's not gonna blow up. But guess what? It saves and conserves your electric bill. Yes, even though it's not being used, it's still spending electricity. It messed me up when I found this out. I was like, Auntie was right. Yeah, it, it really does. It, it, it does. Cancel your memberships. Well, I'm sorry. We're still on um, conserve. We're still on conservation of utilities. Black Friday. I went and bought. I told you I spent. I use Black Friday not to go shopping for things I don't want, but stuff that I've been looking at. This little thing right here on Amazon cost thirty dollars. I got it for six dollars on Black Friday. <laughs> I knew I wanted one. What does it do? It tells me. Where my leaks are in my house. So I shine this on the window like that. You see, I don't know if y'all can see that. It actually tells me the temperature of the walls. So if my wall is one temperature and I can hit go to the window, if I got cold air coming in through that window, it tells me. Final investment. I guarantee this thing gonna save me at least $200, $300 this, this winter. This right here. $5 investment. Two, two or $300 this winter. Five, dude, go find your leaks. Make that thing airproof. All right. Next thing is cancel your memberships. You got some Netflix. Matter of fact, you know what? Give me one second. I got to get something for y'all. Those of you who got Netflix, uh, I think Mr. Robinson, Josette, both of y'all know I got one of these. You need to get one of these things right here. A fire TV stick. You need to get one of these right here, a Fire TV stick. Why? Because it replaces your Netflix. That's $100 that you ain't spending on Netflix. What is it, $8.99 a month, $7.99 a month? This thing costs, well, you actually can contact me. I, I'll send you one, $80. And you can get every movie that's out there. All your sermons, T.D. Jakes, your Joyce Myers, your Creflo Dollars, you name them. They got podcasts on these things already on there. Uh, Mr. Robinson can testify on it. I'm telling you, he's a man of God. Um... Got one, got one from me, and uh, he called me. Hey man, I need you to hit. How you do this? Like man, stream radio from anywhere. Every single movie. I don't care if it's in the theaters right now, and it's still legal. It's legal. Why am I? I'm not doing this to push it so I can sell these, even though I do. But uh, I'm pushing it because it saves you money. It saves you money, man. Because guess what? The next thing you're gonna do when you cancel that Netflix, you are gonna drop them premium channels. Oh my God! Yes, that's thirty, forty dollars a month. Amen, amen, brother. Yeah, cancel them premium channels. Yeah, and all them other channels too in the name of Jesus. All the thing you need is basic cable. And honestly, sometimes you don't need that because that actually got live streaming television on it. I still keep my local basic cable. I got basic, but I ain't got none of the other stuff. In the name of Jesus. Just email me, georgiagmhoward.com. We'll talk more about that. But how we, what are we doing? We're reducing our expenses. We're reducing our expenses. I think... Uh, um, Josette just um, she took her she canceled her Vivint alarm system um, she got a fire stick she went to Comcast got faster internet um, got an alarm system she got internet and she got it was cable internet phone 
whatever. And when she got done putting all this in one package with Comcast or Xfinity One, I don't know which one they are now. Uh, I believe just said it was about a hundred, about a hundred dollars a month savings that you was doing, one hundred and fifty somewhere around one hundred fifty to one hundred dollars a month. I know it was like seventy dollars just on the Vivint system. It was crazy. Uh, yeah, about a hundred to one hundred fifty dollars a month savings. Dude, it's one hundred and fifty dollars a month savings right there. Boom. He's like, how can I save? How can I save uh, fifteen hundred dollars? Boom, right there. That one thing saved her fifteen hundred dollars. Well, actually, no, that's not. That's eighteen hundred dollars. That one thing. Boom. One hundred fifty dollars a month is eighteen hundred dollars a year. That one thing, $1,800. Now, you take that $1,800 and put it on your credit card bill, and you pay that off. And you, So now the next year, you still got the $1,800 you were paying plus that credit card that you were paying. So now that's more money that I can put towards debt. Once we debt free, we can take that and start putting it towards wealth. That one thing. So this stuff I'm telling you is real. Cancel your Netflix. Cancel your cable. Uh, your newspaper. Man, you can get online now. And you don't even, well, I'm not going to preach that. Your local, your gym membership. I'm guilty. I got a gym membership I've been paying for for two years. I've been to the gym five times in two years. I got a camp. <laughs> I'm not lying. I'm so serious. Man, I got a, a LA Fitness gym membership. And I keep telling myself, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I've been paying that thing for two years. And I'm just, I ain't went. And every time I get ready to cancel, I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to go. No, nah, I'm going to go. Just cancel it. I can do it. I can do on here. I got Insanity on here. I got P90X on here. No. Don't keep the gym. Cancel it. I can work out at home. In the name of Jesus, I can work out at home. I promise you. And I'll do it. I'll get up and work, at, work out at home before I go to the gym. I just don't have the time. I really don't. I take it 30 minutes to an hour. I done done P90X. I done done Insanity. I done done all of them. I sit at home and I'd work out all day. But getting up, going out, and actually going to the gym, I just don't have the motivation. It looks good. It feels good. I love the sauna. I love the steam room. I love the whirlpool. And I love the pool. That's why I got LA Fitness instead of, you know, all the other stuff. I'm like, if I'm going to go, I want to, and I'm done. I want to sit in that steam. I want to sit in that sauna. I want to sit in that steam room. I want to sit in the hot tub. Yeah, I know. I think Josette ain't never went. <laughs> I think she went one time. Okay. So, um, I didn't mean to tell on you. Uh, but can't, we got to counsel that thing. I got to counsel that thing. In the name of Jesus. Magazines that you don't read. Magazines you don't read. Counsel them. You ain't read. They sitting up on the table. You got a whole book shelf of magazines on the table or in the bathroom that you ain't even read. Counsel it. That's money. Cut these expenses. Start cooking and packing your lunch. I said it. Start cooking and packing your lunch. Think of it this way. If you spend, and we'll just say, $8 a day on a meal. And that's about average, about $8 a day on a meal. And you go out every day. That's eight times five is $40. That's $200 a month. $200 a month is $2,400 a year. $2,400 a year is what you just spent, what you save on just packing your lunch. You take that plus the 150 that Josette says she saved and you just pack your lunch every day. That's 1200 plus the, what was it, 2400 So that's $3,600 right there. Boom, right there. Ah, automatic. It's done. Cut your expenses. This is, this is the money you're throwing away that you wouldn't even calculate it. Remember when Luke 16 said, give account of your management? Give an account of your management. Money you throw away. Money I'm throwing away. I'm guilty. I just told you. I got the gym membership. Don't eat out as much. How often you eat out? And I'm not saying don't ever eat out. Give me some days off. I'm just saying, how often do you eat out? You got to have this tenacity to say, until I'm debt free, I ain't doing nothing else until I'm debt free. When I say nothing, y'all got to say nothing. There's nothing more important until I get the, I can't afford a three, $400 hairdo. Why? Because I got a whole nother mindset. I can't afford to go get my nails, lashes, and feet done right now. Why? I got a whole nother mindset. I'm focused. I got tenacity. I'm, I'm focused on getting debt free. I'm focused on building my wealth. Then I can live like I want to. Sure, I can have my own hairstylist come to the house, do my makeup, my, my, my lashes, my massages. Fellas, they can do, we can have our own barbers come to the house and trim us up. But you got to get there first. We spending money trying to look good and we broke. Got to change the mindset. My haircuts are free in Jesus' name. 
Uh, all right. And I'm going tomorrow. Okay. All right. Um, what am I doing? Oh, insurance. Shop your insurance, your auto health and home. Auto health and home insurance. Shop it. Just pick up the phone. I got Geico. Can you save me money? They will be excited to save you money. They will fight with each other to save you money. I promise you. Takes you 10 minutes. Pick up the phone. This is how my this is who my insurance carriers are. This is how much I pay a month. This is how old I am. This is where I live. And this is the kind of car I drive. That's all you got to tell them. They're going to say, Mr. and Mrs. Howard, you can save this much money every single month. $100 a month is $1,200 $1, a year. Just auto, auto, home, and health. Boom. I'm telling you, if you got whole life policies, counsel them. You don't want whole life, we want term. We're going to talk about that in a whole other segment. I'll get on that and just stay there all day. Just no whole life term. And you will save a lot of money every single month. In Jesus' name. Now, if you're older already, if you're already older, if you're over 50 or 60 years old, you might want to keep your whole life. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll balance it. We'll balance it. We'll, let's look it up and do the research based on because each person may be a little different. Um, but if you 40 years old or younger, really 45 years old or younger, you need term, term, term. Why? Because I don't need. Well, we I'm not going to preach it. Let's just keep going. Um, this one is real big. Y'all ready for this one? Reduce your child care expenses. Oh, my God. I just read an article about a couple weeks ago now, maybe a couple months ago now, that it said child care expenses cost more than college. It said, I swear, this is what the, the, art, the article said, that child care costs more or just as much as college, just as much or more than college, something like that. Either way it go, like, dude, you paying college tuition by sending your kids to daycare. We got to find some. We got to find some alternatives. Grandmama house, auntie's house. Somebody, I mean, somebody retired in the family in Jesus' name. Oh, that's right. That's right. Let your yes be yes and your no's be no's. But I'm telling you, somebody got to watch the kid. We got to find something else. We got we to gotta find another way. We, we had a couple in Breakthrough. This is the true story. We had a couple in Breakthrough. When they came, when they went through Breakthrough, a uh, married couple, uh, no paid grandmother. <laughs> All right. Um that they found out in there that the amount of money that they were paying in childcare expenses and the amount of money they were spending in the time it took her to get to work and the time it took her to get home and the amount of mileage that she was using, gas money and all that kind of stuff that she was using with all that kind of stuff. Hey Amen. I see somebody, grandmama just got a job look like, I don't know. <laughs> all right. Um, that she found out that it was cheaper for them to let her stay at home with her children than it was to keep sending her to, to work as a sending her to work and sending the kids to daycare. It was better for her to stay home, save the gas money, the job, the car, and all that kind of stuff, and to save the money from the daycare than it was for her to go to work. True story. It changed a marriage, but they never sat down to weigh it. They never sat down to weigh it. You gotta look at this stuff. All right, how else do we cut expenses? Stop buying clothes. Stop buying. Clothes will last forever if you take care of them. Forever. Only time you need to buy more clothes is if there's a special occasion, a special event that requires you to wear something new. Yeah, I know. Yes. Yes. That's the only time you need it. Yes. It's pulling away from you. Yes, it's pulling away from your future, pulling away from your investments, pulling away from your you your debt strategy. Stop buying clothes, shoes. That's guys and girls, shoes. You got enough shoes in the closet right now for every single outfit you got. I guarantee you, you got enough shoes in the closet. Guys and girls, you got enough. Stop buying it. You don't. You got thirty pair of jeans. I didn't say thirty. You got ten pair of jeans. It's seven days in a week. Why you need another pair of jeans? Guys and girls, I can get a, can I get a 12, 12, 12 program to wean me off? I'm telling you, you got to get this stuff. It's a new mindset. Why? Because I'm focused. I'm focused on where I'm trying to get. I know where I am and I know where I'm trying to get. When you look at this number and see where you are right now and where you should be in your net worth, that alone should make you focused. 
When you start seeing what God has promised you and where you want to get at, that alone should make you focused. You got to get there. You got to want this more than you want that. You need a vision board. Yes, that's a very good thing. We're going to talk about that vision thing. Matter of fact, I wanted to talk about it today because I skipped it. I skipped the whole thing because I knew that if I talked about it, but he took Abraham out in Genesis chapter 15. He took him out and he said, look up at the stars and I'm going to get, oh my God. I knew that if I talked about that today, we were not going to deal with nothing with finance. If I got on that vision thing, that is one of my passions. You got to see it. You got to see it. And I'm almost going to preach it now. All right, listen, and we've been on here an hour. Uh, we're talking about reducing expenses. Uh, one of the things I want to do, we talk about the six ways for increasing your net worth. Let's, let's go ahead and finish that up, and then uh, we're going to get off of here. It's been an hour now. So um, stop buying clothes, uh, and I'm going to say this too. Even when it's on sale, I'll wait. Matter of fact, I need everybody in here to say, I agree. I received that. Stop buying clothes even when it's on sale. Come on, type it in there. I, I'll receive it. I receive it. I receive it. We're gonna put the devil to shame right now. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Stop buying clothes even when it's on sale. Stop unless it's something that unless it's something that makes you. You gotta get a new outfit. I, I lost weight. I didn't gain weight. Or uh, this event requires this type of outfit. This 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 event requires this type of outfit. Come on, I'll receive it, I'll receive it in Jesus' name. Uh, Brittany, Josette, Denise, I'm waiting on you. Demond, I'm waiting on you. I'll receive it in the name of Jesus. I want everybody in the room. I'll receive it, I'll receive it. I'm waiting on you in Jesus' name. We're going to put the devil to shame right now. Let's put him to shame right now. I'll receive it. Come on, you stop buying clothes even when it's on sale. I'll receive it. All right, uh, Miss Stans. All right, Miss Stans, thank you so much. I'll receive it. Come on. I know it's hard. Y'all, your finger's shaking. You're like, I... Or most of the time, no, not most of the time. Bug receives it in the name of Jesus. I know you, 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 you shaking while you, while you putting it in there. You making the devil a liar today. We changing that mindset. I receive it even when it's on sale. I can't afford to save. Can't afford to save. I'm focused. I'm going somewhere. All right. Step number four. That was should have been. She said, "Woo, it was hard." When you sweating, get a cold sweat over there. Get that girl a glass of water. Somebody, get her a glass of water. All right. <laughs> All right. Step number four. Keep the money you save by paying off debt and re and reducing your expenses and put it somewhere it will grow. We're gonna talk about where it grows tomorrow. Number five. Buy a car that you will drive forever. You know, Josette the other day was teasing me. She was telling me, she says, well, you just bought a new Mercedes. Well, not a new Mercedes. I'll take that back. You just bought a Mercedes. Number one, it ain't new. Number two, the price I got for it, you can't beat. And number three, I'll drive that car till the wheels fall off of it. Boom. Drive it, drive it till the wheels fall off. So S550, I know I'm going to get 300,000 miles out of it. I know I'm going to get 300,000 miles out of it. I call him the pot. <laughs> All right. Taxes. Taxes. The last one. Did you not know the first three months out the year? I can't talk about it now. It's time to go. Just taxes. The last one is we got to find the tax savings. We got to get rid of this tax stuff. Governments, get your money back from your, you know, uh, uh, we're going to take advantage of the generosity of your brother, of your uncle. We gonna Yes, no, no taxes. We There's some generosity. There's some your uncle is actually very generous. You just don't know he's very generous. And we're going to actually teach you some of the generosity that he has through um, to ways not to avoid taxes. Because we will render unto Caesar with Caesar's. We will do that. But we will also make sure that we be in good stewards of what God has actually given us. When God said be a good steward, that means that if, if the law says I only got to pay you this much, being a good steward means I'm paying you more than that. The reason you get a tax return is because you paid the government too much money. The government ain't handing out free money. No, you overpaid in taxes. And they took that money, they invested it, and they gave you back your money, and they took your Uncle Al, your Uncle Sam. Um, you know what? <laughs> they they give you back your money. But what you think the government did with that money? They invested it. If you escrow, when you, if you escrow, when you pay your tax and insurance, it's only due every six months. What do you think the bank do with, let's say your tax and insurance is $400 a month? $400 a month, your tax and insurance and your mortgage. And you've got a million people giving them $400 a month. That's $400 million a month they're getting. And they get to keep it every six months. 
What do you think they're doing with that money? They invest in it. You can do it yourself. Invest that money yourself. Taxes come due, pay it. Insurance come due, pay it. Okay. I got to go. I, I, this is my passion, y'all. I'll talk about this stuff forever. This is my passion. I love it. I love what I do. But we got to go. I'm about an hour and five minutes in. And plus, I got to uh, go figure out what happened on the haves and have nots. So. <laughs> All right. This is my time. God bless you. Thank you so much. Don't leave. We'll be back tomorrow. I promise we'll be back tomorrow. Same place, same time. We'll be back tomorrow doing the same thing. And that's teaching you how to get your mind renewed, how to get out of this poverty mindset, how to begin to renew this mind. We're going to shape it and watch it, okay? In the name of Jesus, I'm watching. Yes, and I'm watching you and it. Yes, <laughs> you're watching both of them. All right. In the name of Jesus. All right. See you tomorrow for morning Bible study. We're still going to be talking about Abraham. I know I told y'all yesterday that we were going to get off Abraham today. We're not going to do it. We're going to be on Abraham for a little bit longer. Thank you for praying for me. I'm praying for you as well. And I'll receive every prayer that you're saying. Be praying for the ministry and pray that God continues to bring us increase because everybody needs to hear this message. All right. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. And I love you. It won't stop. This thing never stops. Stop.